Hey, welcome to our motorhome user guide slash video. I'm just going to take you through a bit of a rundown on how to use the bus and the different parts of it. So come with me. Uh, these are the keys that you will have. We have our ignition key and our entry key. As we come through, straight away we have uh, our light uh, switch panel. Uh, the top one here is our interior lights. As you can see, they power up our uh, LED strip lights. Uh, the rest of the switches are for external lights and the bottom one is for our hot water system. Um, right down there. The, the hot water system uh, is underneath at the back. Once the gas is turned on, you flick that switch and that will heat up the hot water. It will roughly take 10 minutes um, for the water to heat up. Once you finish with the hot water, you can switch that off. Coming through the rest of the home, we have a uh, bit of a book here, a guide that you can refer to as well. I'll show you where all the spare keys are. Up here is where the spare keys are kept, as well as uh, a like a tap adapter and a spare hose fitting for the fresh water. Our fire blanket, toilet rolls are kept here. Tea and coffee. I'll just take you to the outside of the bus where uh, the diesel access cap is. Uh, just around the side here. We have the diesel inlet, it is diesel only, there's no key, just unscrew, fill up with diesel, to the back of the bus. This is our gas hot water system in there, uh, so when, the, when it is ignited you'll hear a flame. Right here is our 240 volt shore power, but I'll refer to that in a moment. Just under here is our gas. So we just pull those latches back, turn it, flip it up, and underneath is a gas bottle. I keep it off. Um, you just turn it on at the valve underneath there, and you will have gas. Underneath here is where the grey water hose is kept and the toilet chemicals. Just here is the cassette toilet. It's quite simple. Lift up the latch, pull it out to empty it. We turn this unscrew the cap, tip it into a waste uh, dump, wash it out, uh, about 60 mil of toilet chemical into the lid, pour it in, a litre of fresh water, close this up, straight in. Done. Next I'll show you how to connect the fresh water uh, hose. That is kept. Uh, usually I keep it under the bunk bed back here. Underneath is a bit of access there. Um, I do usually keep the hose here. Also back there are the, is the emergency tyre um, wheel replacement kit with the jack and the, the different tools you need for that. But here is the fresh water hose. We'll go back out side and I'll show you how to use it. I'll just go get 
get that tap fitting I showed you. Alrighty, here's the tap fitting I was talking about. This tap fitting we unscrew this, screw the grey fitting in, just nice and finger tight, not too not too tight. Connect the hose and this end connects to the tap, the shore water. Once that's all connected, you will have shore water that will go through to your shower and your sink tap to refill the water tap the water tanks under here is a valve at the moment I get right down under there Finn the valve is turned off it cuts across the pipe switch this on so it's in line with the pipe and that water will fill up your fresh water tank. Once that tank is full, water will start overflowing. You need to switch that in the off position again. And uh, you can keep the hose connected for mains water pressure or unplug it as you wish. As you wish. I'll just show you the gray water. That black hose at the back connects to the gray water tank under here. It's just a, a loose push-on fit. You turn the valve and all your grey water will go through the hose into your dump point or um, grey water drain or whatever it is. Alrighty. Next. We have our gas cooker. Our gas cooker stored underneath. Pull these mattresses off. This is our gas cooker here. It's an oven and a two, bur two burner stove on the top. In here is our gas hose. So we'll just pull that out of the bag. Once this is set up on the table outside, I'll show you where this plugs in. So follow me. You've got your gas cooker set up on the table provided here. You've got this connected to the back of the gas cooker. This is a bayonet fitting, just like your standard house gas fitting. We just push it in and turn, and we're connected. Uh, once the gas bottle's turned on, you'll have gas for the barbecue. Turn your gas off, disconnect. And you're done. Alrighty. I'll show you how to use the bed. As you can see, it's pretty pretty easy to lift up. This is a double or queen size kind of bed to assemble it. Lift this up, pull it over. I'm just watching your fingers and your toes. Lay it down. You can keep this open or you can slide this extension across. in there. There you go. And you can use the sheets provided up in the top cupboards up there. And to disassemble,
time in reverse. I keep just the one cushion here and the spare cushion up on the bed during the day so it's out of the way. Alrighty, there's also in this cupboard here a whole bunch of uh, bits and pieces uh, should something need repairing on the road. And in here we have the shore power cable and uh, some more supplies. I'll just show you how to connect the shore power. This is a 15 amp plug. It has a slightly larger earth. What I like to do. Hey Charles, just recording. Recording? Yep. Just loop that through there. Plug that in. If anyone trips on it, it's not gonna rip this out. Plug this in to your shore power. And then we go inside and we flick a switch. Oh, these rocks. <laughs> okay, this is the electrical system of the motorhome. When you're connected to shore power, this switch needs to be in the up position and all your power uh, to the power points uh, will be powered by shore power. If you wish to run power from the inverter, this needs to be in the down position and the inverter switched on. And then you can run, uh, you can use the 240, 240 volt power points. Uh, don't use, if you're running it off the inverter, you're running off the battery. So stay away from using devices such as a kettle or toaster, um, toast, toasty maker, sandwich press, those sorts of things, electric frying pans, uh, and the air conditioner as they do use a lot of power and they'll drain the batteries and you won't have any power left. Um, the fridge runs full time, so you don't need to worry about that. You can keep this on and uh, you'll have no problem with the fridge. Plenty of space. Heaps of room. Uh, water pump. In the cupboard here, we have our water pump. Once that switches on, that will supply pressure to all your pipes. Uh, we have some cleaning equipment, bits and pieces. We also provide six bowls, uh, some mugs that I've got to put in here still, a bunch of cutlery. And down here. through here we have the shower the vent to work the vent it needs to be open a certain amount for the fan to go on once that's closed the fan will turn off we have a flushing toilet to use the toilet this little latch can either be opened or closed but when you want to flush the toilet, it must be open. Once flushed, close it up, and you're all good. 
I'm pretty sure that's it. Uh, we'll just do the awning and then I believe that will be everything. Okay, to do the awning, we have some Velcro there. If you want to come around, maybe this side. I'm going to stand there, Finn. Behind here is a latch that needs to go up. That locks in these two arms. It's the same for the other one. There, and then behind, we've got that latch again. So once those two latches are done, Velcro is off. I just want to hop up, and there's a ratchet, a little lever, right here. We want to pull that down and then we pull the awning out. There we go. All the way down. There we go. If you want to come with underneath then, I'll show you what's next. Oh, it's a bit dark. Let me slide those arms up. Up here is a bit of a, a release button. All the way so it locks. Same on the other side. All the way. And then this next part, you want to open this black lever. And this silver trigger here unlocks the arm. We pull the trigger and we slide the awning up. Let's go to the other side. Pull the trigger. Close the arm. Then up here, you want to pull down on the awning so the material is nice and tight and tighten that up. We do that for both sides. If winds are going to reach over 20 kilometers an hour or during the night time, the awning must be packed up. Uh, once wind gets under here and catches, the likelihood of damage is, is quite high. So everything in reverse, I'll take you through it quickly. Loosen this. Open the trigger. Take the weight of the awning. Pull the trigger, slide down. And we head back to that ratchet lever. Back here. We pull that lever up. Which allows the awning to go back. The locks need to go back down. Velcro on and the other sliding lock back in. Can't stress enough how important it is to make sure that those are locked in before you drive off and uh, and head to your next destination. Alrighty, hope that covers everything. Otherwise, uh, get in touch with me and. We'll run you through any issues. Thanks.